How's it going? Bravo Hacks here with another tutorial for SMB Exec. And this time we're going to go ahead and go over the system exploitation options. So let's go ahead and start up SMB Exec. And here at the main menu, you see option number two is system exploitation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit two and enter. And here we have a list of a few things here in the system exploitation menu. Uh, we're going to go ahead and stick with number one, remote system access. So I'm going to go ahead and hit one and enter. Now here it gives you the option right away to get your payload set up. You'll see there's a few options there. Um, you can also try other Windows payloads that aren't listed there. Um, or if you already have a payload and a Metasploit RC file, you can just select that option, give it the path to those, and uh, it'll launch those and use that payload. But I'm going to go ahead and just set up a reverse HTTPS payload at number two and enter. Now here it's basically telling me, you know, we've chosen the Windows Interpreter reverse HTTPS payload. Um, and then it's going to list your active interfaces. Uh, I only have one interface here, um, so it gives me the IP address. So this is for my reverse callback. I'm just going to go ahead and put in the IP address, 11.11.14.221. And then it asks you what port you want to listen on. I'm just going to stick with 443. Hit enter. Now it's going to go through and build your payload for you. It takes a little bit. What it does is it goes through three different types of encoding, and it goes through several iterations of each encoding type. So what we did is we built it in so it's random every time, so the payload will get a different signature each time. So here you'll see that it's going through seven iterations. So it did three different encoding types, seven iterations of each. Um, and then what it's doing is it's going through, it's, it's adding some random characters, some random items, um, and it's creating a C file, and then it compiles that C file into an EXE. And for the most part, it usually gets past most antivirus. Um, Microsoft Security Essentials is one that uh, I know it won't pass. Um, I think Sophos recently we had an issue with. So what you can see over here now, we have the Metasploit console up and listening on port 43. And over here, it's asking, let's get some info to finalize the attack. So please enter the name of the writable share on the victim. This can be any any share that's basically open that you know that you can write to with your account. So um, C dollar, admin dollar, you know, users, just whatever um, is open on the host. So in this case, I'm just going to hit enter to take the default of C dollar. And then now it's going to ask you to provide the path to place the executable on. Um, a lot of times, you know, we know we can write to a temp directory, so I'm just going to put in whack whack windows, whack whack temp, hit enter. Um, please provide the username to authenticate as, pretty straightforward. Administrator. And the password that uh, is for that account. And then in this case, I'm using just a local uh, account. If you had a domain account, this is where you put the domain in. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter to uh, accept the local host default. And then the target IP or host list, 11.11.14.209. Um, .11 if you had a host list, you just put in the path to your host list at that point, you'd be good to go. Hit enter. And you can see authentication was successful, uploading and attempting to execute the payload. And you can see in the MSF console here, it's doing its work. Basically, it uh, uploaded the executable, and it launched it, and then it migrates into uh, notepad.exe process. Um, and over here, back on the left, you can see it says ready for cleanup, hit enter when the shell stop rolling in. So we know that uh, since this was only one system, we know we've got uh, all the shells, but uh, if you have a list of like 100, it might go through and they might still be coming in and migrating to that notepad process. So you kind of want to wait till that's finished. So let's go ahead and hit enter here in this menu. And now what it does is it basically goes out, since it knows it's in the notepad process, it kills the original payload process and removes that file from the victim computer. And then it also puts a list of the IP addresses um, that were basically looted or had a payload execute on them successfully into a list for you. So you know these are the systems that I've executed um, this payload against. So I'm going to go ahead and enter to return to the main menu and go over here to my console. 
I'll look at the sessions. So sessions minus L, you can see I'm logged in on a uh, system with administrator. So if I want to interact, minus I1, of course. Again, not, there's nothing zero day here. Um, basically what we're doing is we're taking a payload that we've created that's obfuscated um, and we're uploading it to the victim using SMB client and then we're executing it using WinExe, Win which is an extremely powerful tool that's similar to SysInternal's PSExec, except this is uh, leverages Samba. So a lot of times it's not caught when you do it this way. Um, you know, the reason we wrote this was uh, we were finding more and more that uh, the Metasploit PSExec module, um, the signature was, was getting caught by a lot of antivirus. So um, we found a blog by Carnal Ownage that basically explains how to use WinEXE. And uh, that's really how SMB Exec got started. Um, we had issues with getting our payloads on the systems effectively. And um, we, once we found that blog, we read it. We basically just automated the process here for ourselves. And now we're sharing it with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and just exit out of this. You guys have seen all this before. And control C out of it. Close that window. Now, a lot of people, they don't like Xterm, which is fine. No problem with that. If you don't like Xterm, let me go ahead and show you in the code here. Um, it's right near the top. You see there's two lines here that basically states, you know, uncom uncomment the following line to launch Metasploit in a screen session instead of an Xterm window. So if you just uncomment that and then rerun it, at that point, no matter what, it's going to always run in a screen session for you. Or if you know you're on a system where you've tunneled X out over SSH, um, and you don't want to run it in screen, you can just uncomment this one, and uh, it'll basically always run uh, the X run it with an X term. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to hit me up, jbrob.hacks at gmail.com. Thank you.